How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video. And in this one we have the brand new Nvidia Shield TV. It's smaller, it's got some power in there as well, it's packing a punch. Uh, but without further ado, let's open it up and see what's in the box and go through some of the specifications as well. So you know what to expect if you're looking to get one of these. Let's get on with it. So previously Nvidia Shield TV has been uh, a different shape, but this time it's quite cylindrical and it looks different as well. So you just open this out of the box so you guys can see straight away what that looks like. And with this one now as well, you don't get that controller that comes in a box, so you know your normal gaming controller. Uh, because Nvidia believes that most people will have the previous edition, so you might have the previous controller. Or you have Xbox controller or DualShock PS4 controller that you can use with it for gaming. Um, otherwise, there will be accessories available as well on the Nvidia website, so you, you'll be able to buy that separately if that's something that you're looking to do. Inside the package, you get Nvidia Shield TV itself. You can see this, the size is different, the shape is different, it's now cylindrical. Uh, don't be tempted to twist this as well. It's not a tube that you open for any purposes. And on this side, it's very simple. You get your power port, Ethernet port there as well, so you can connect it to the internet and game and so on. And it's got that vent as well, so it keeps it nice and uh, cool when you're playing games for a long period of time. Uh, on the other side, you've got your power button, you've got HDMI port and a USB-C port as well. Uh, so the way they've designed this, so it's very streamlined. So imagine this is behind your TV. It's going to be nice and stealth. So you connect one end to the TV, one end to your power port. Nice and simple and easy. And if you go for the pro version, it's exactly the same shape as the previous generation Nvidia Shield TV. Uh, so I will be putting that in this video at all. Next up, you have your controller. And as you can see there, it's very different as well. So now it has this, uh, this shape, this triangular shape. So if you can see from that side, you can see the size, uh, the shape difference there as well with Nvidia Shield uh, logo on that side. On the front, you got the single dedicated Netflix button there as well, which is pretty cool. This has got infrared as well as Bluetooth connectivity. So with Fire Blaster, you'll be able to connect this to your standard TV and control your TV with it as well. One thing I really like about it now as well is the way it now sits nice and comfortably like this. So anyone who's got the previous edition will know that it's easy to lose the controller. Uh, we'll talk more about the controller in a minute and what you can do with it as well. Next, you have your quick start guide. Again, give that a read if you haven't used this before. It helps you get set up very quickly uh, so you don't waste time at all. You can start gaming or watch uh, Netflix and so on. Lastly, in the packaging, you get a power cable as well. So three pin plug because I'm in the UK. Uh, it's not too long. Uh, it's I think it's a standard size for me. Uh, it's it's enough uh, to, to plug in without having to worry about the length and where to plug it in at home and stuff. So uh, that's more than enough for me. But yeah, that's up to you to decide when you pick up one of these. Just to go through some of the specifications as well. So this is running on NVIDIA Tigra X1 Plus processor. You have 256 core NVIDIA GPU in there. It supports Dolby Atmos and Vision as well. So not just audio. So you got Dolby Digital Plus. You got two gigs of RAM in there, eight gig of storage. You got micro SD card expandability, which uh, is probably something I forgot to mention. That's going to be uh, on. I'm trying to figure out what side it is on here. Actually, it's on that side. So the port that I thought was a USB C port is actually not USB C. That's where your micro SD card goes into uh, for expandability. Uh, it's got uh, dual band MIMO uh, or MIMO Wi-Fi. So you got strong Wi-Fi connectivity. It's got gigabit gigabit internet uh, compatibility, and as I mentioned earlier, you got Bluetooth, and it's Bluetooth 5.0 low energy. Elsewhere, you got 4K HDR and AI upscaling, which uh, I saw the demo of, and it looks amazing. It just means if you're watching 720p on uh, YouTube, for example, that can be upscaled as well. So rather than standard upscaling, this will look and compare uh, two different pictures and give you the best of the images that you can get. So it's sharper, uh, more detailed, and that's how you want it to be. A little bit more on the controller as well. So like as I mentioned, you got Bluetooth and IR Blaster there. You got a microphone for voice control. You got a backlit button now as well. So again, imagine trying to use this in the dark. You wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, it includes two AAA batteries. So again, you don't have to keep recharging it. You can just put another battery in there when, whenever you need to. And it's got remote locator as well. Again, just tackling that issue of losing your remote control. I can't tell you how many of them I've uh, lost and I've had to replace on the previous edition. As per usual, you've got Google Assistant uh, support as well, which works with home stuff as well. So if you want to control your lighting in the home, uh, you can use this to connect with that as well, or even turn on your TV. It works with Alexa as well. And as per usual, you got Google Play, so you can download different games as well and play on this, like Call of Duty that just come out. You'll be able to play that on here. And you've got NVIDIA GeForce Now as well, so you've got access to a whole catalog of games once you've subscribed as well. If you want to connect other devices to it, you've got uh, Google, Google Chromecast built in as well. So this is something I do for my smartphone. Sometimes 
I download something to my phone and then I want to stream it. Or if I want to stream uh, YouTube from my phone, I'll be able to do that as well. And it's Android TV. So you've got a whole range of catalog of entertainment and videos, games and so on that you can get and enjoy your entertainment. There's also a quick settings button here, which can be customized to activate different things. But by default, this is going to be for settings. So when you press that, uh, if you see in the background, this will be bring up settings option, which slides out in the corner there, if you can see ever so slightly blurred out in the background. But that's, the, that's what that button does. But you can change that to apply to different things, which is pretty cool as well. This new battery should last you up to six months as well, which is something that I really uh, appreciate as well. So with six months battery life, you don't have to worry about replacing it all the time. So as, to, as we were talking about earlier with uh, Dolby Vision, so this will work on Prime, Netflix, uh, Google Play movies will support it very soon as well. Uh, Roku doesn't support Atmos and Vision on Netflix, but this one does. So that's uh, something that this one's got one up against stuff like Roku TV. With Tigre X1 Plus, is up to 25% faster, 25% faster uh, than the predecessor. You got AI upscaling uh, first for streaming players. It means that the first time we're gonna see on anything that's streaming uh, like this, like the Nvidia Shield TV here. And how that works is it looks at the source, it does a little look at the traditional upscaling and then combine that with AI prediction and deep learning neural network and compares the traditional to AI version and delivers the best uh, picture that, that's possible out of the two, which is pretty cool when I saw it. AI upscaling will work up to 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second doesn't work right now. So this will be compatible with 4AP, 720p and 10, 1080p content as well. So how much is this gonna set you back? This will be 149 pounds uh, available from today. Uh, so you'll be able to pick one up. There's also a pro version, which looks like the previous edition, uh, looks like the previous one, which um, it's going to cost you £199 if you were to buy that one. In terms of uh, Google Stadia, uh, it's an, this is an open platform here. So if Google decides to bring it to Android TV, we'll have access to that as well, which would be pretty sick. In order to switch on that AI upscaling mode, if you go into settings, so if I just bring that out again on the side, we can then go into AI upscaling there and then you can enhance, you can change the settings here. So you can have basic level, uh, you can have enhanced, and AI enhanced as well. So for me, I'll probably put in AI enhanced and then you can change the level there. So you can go from premium uh, to low to high as well. So it's better to keep it, uh, keep it medium so it doesn't look over the top. Uh, and there's demo mode as well, which means you can toggle the settings button uh, on the corner there to be able to see the differences uh, there as well. So if I just press that and then you see how that works in a second. Whilst that's loading as well, there's also an app that you can download. So you can download the NVIDIA TV uh, application. So if I just focus that in for a second, um, and you can select your actual TV and pair it up with your smartphone. So that allows you to do things like um, use your phone as a trackpad, uh, which is pretty cool uh, because the controller sometimes makes it difficult for you to actually do anything. So you can see there, you can uh, just, if I go on YouTube, you can see it's interacting with the TV in the background automatically. And this is the trackpad there. I can use that to play, swipe, and I've also got a keyboard there as well. So like I was saying, it's, it just makes it easier to type on here, as you can see. So let's just go back for a second. And then trackpad moves everything, as you can see there. It just works really well. I can go on Netflix and do this. Just using my phone, so if I lose my controller, which I hope I won't anymore now, um, I'll still be able to control the TV uh, using this, which is, again, pretty cool. There's also that demo mode, which allows you to compare them as well. So if you press and hold this, uh, here, so whilst you're watching a movie, this is YouTube for example, you can press the settings and in the top corner you can change the different levels of AI enhancement and then if you press and hold it, you get this line that allows you to drag it across to see the difference between when AI enhancement is on and when it's not on to see how that actually enhances your experience. So again, maybe that allows you to turn it off completely or turn it back on if you wish to do so, but I thought that was quite neat as well. The voice search as well works really well, so for example, if I just press the microphone key on the controller, I'll be able to say stuff like, um, try not to laugh animals. And that will bring me all the content that's got something to do with try not to laugh and then I can watch it and do whatever I need to do, which is pretty cool. Guys, so that's it for the Nvidia Shield TV, uh, the latest one. By the way, I forgot to mention as well that this supports HDR10, but not HDR10+, uh, which is a bit of a shame, but 
HDR10, I'll still take that any day. So that's pretty good. Um, gaming is good. I couldn't find Call of Duty on there for some reason. I don't know about that yet, but I'm going to explore that further and maybe update you guys on Twitter or Gadgets Boy. Um, also, I'm loving the controller. It works really well. Uh, easy to set up with my Xbox controller as well. It took me like a couple of seconds to do that. Um, in the box, you don't get an HDMI cable, so you're going to have to use your current one. Or if you have to buy a new one, you'd have to buy a new one. Um, there's no micro SD card in a box, so if you're not, if you want to put some games in as on micro SD or content or video or whatever, you'd have to do that separately at your own cost. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's a good piece of kit. I love the size of it. It's nice and light and portable, which means I'm going to be taking it with me every time I travel somewhere now. It means I'm going to be carrying my controller and the Nvidia Shield TV with me everywhere I go now as well. But in the meantime, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you pick up one? Is there still any reason to get one? Now that all TV more or less has their own smart functions on there as well. Um, my argument for that would be that the fact that in the future when TVs are getting upgraded and stuff are being added on, instead of buying a new TV that's expensive, you got a set-top box, sorry, a streamer, uh, that's able to be updated all the time with new features and so on. And even if you have to buy a new one, it's not as expensive as buying a new TV anyway. But yes, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you subscribe as well and hit that bell notification so you'll be one of the first people to know when there's a video on this channel. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one.